Welcome to Mission Minded, the podcast where we explore outside the box thinking and carrying out Christ's Great Commission. On this week's episode, we are joined by Zach Loving. Zach is the Director of Aviation for a relief aid organization that serves Southeast Asia. Our sponsor for today's podcast is Dignity Roasters Coffee, locally roasted and packaged by the distressed to fuel each day. Dignity Roasters was born through a passion to partner with the distressed and the desire of bringing the universally loved beverage of coffee to your hands. To order your own coffee or to learn more about Dignity Roasters, visit their website at DignityRoasters.com. Now here's your host, Jim Tingler. Hi and welcome back to the Mission Minded Podcast. I'm Jim Tingler. I'm going to be your host today. And we have a special guest, Zach Loving. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Nice to be here. Glad to have you. So uh, there's there's a lot to unpack today as we get into a little bit of, of your background and what brings you on the show today. But I think a fun fact is is you live in Alaska yeah. for, for some of the year anyway. Yeah, yeah, six months out of the year. Yeah, for the last six years. So that's a lot of fun. It is for sure. Beautiful place to be. Yeah. I mean, anybody... So we live in Florida, obviously, <laughs> and, and people... Um, Extremes. Yeah, well, they, they all often think of alligators and, and mm-hmm. snakes when it comes to Florida. And yeah. it's one of those things that, I do. yeah, they're, they're there. <laughs> um, don't really stress over them. But mm-hmm. yeah, they're around you all the time. When I think of Alaska, I think of bears. Yeah. Yeah. And moose. Moose oh. are actually more dangerous for sure. Really? But uh huh. yeah, more people are killed by moose. But is that we don't have any snakes, though. So <laughs> is that because of car accidents or? Um, well, yeah, maybe so. Maybe that factors into it. Yeah, there's a lot of those. But then, yeah, they're they're just super protective, you know, and they're just all around. Okay. In your backyard. So have you had a moose encounter or bear encounter? Yeah, uh, not bears, thankfully, but moose. Yeah, just in the backyard. You know, we'll send the kids out to play, and then you look at the edge over there at the tree line, and there's mama and baby moose laying there. You know. And, um, yeah, we've had to jump in our car a couple of times. They'll come running out and, you know, like, ah, jump wow. in the car. Yeah. So they're, especially when they have calves, they're really protective. But, yeah. Well, that know. is, that is a different world. I don't look out my backyard to see if there's any alligators. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but Hey, right. each, each, uh, each area in this world has, uh, some uniqueness. So mm-hmm. yep, makes it fun and interesting, but yeah, for sure. So Zach, um, Maybe you could share a little bit today on, um, you know, what what you do, um, in as far as mission goes. This is yeah. this is the mission minded podcast, and we like to interview people who are trying to live out, you know, some uh, part of the Great Commission, mm-hmm. and uh, some some people who are involved in different missions in different ways. And you're obviously involved in that. So yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Well. Um my journey into missions started really junior to senior year of high school. Um, I was I grew up in the church, you know, born again at 12 years old, you know, have a Christian family, all that stuff, which I'm really thankful for. But I, and my family's been involved in ministry, just local, you know, local church um, worship and you know pastoring kind of aspect. Um, but then for me personally. Um, missions came along really that between junior and senior year. And and I always try to encourage people, send your kids to youth camp, send your kids to conferences, you know. Um, And I was talking to some of the other staff here about that same thing, right in that same, like 17 to 18 years old. um, God is like really trying to grab young people, you know, it's a big decision point in your life anyways. Um, And so I was at a at a youth camp, just kind of the normal week long summer camp, and uh, the guy was was speaking about you know just having a vision for your life and that God God's got a plan for you you know even at your age He's got something that He wants you to do, um, and at the end He just kind of did this blanket prayer kind of over the group like you know Lord give these kids vision give them purpose, um, and that I don't think He meant a literal vision but that's what happened to me kind of like the Peter on the rooftop moment, just a quick glimpse of, um, I saw myself flying a red float plane and landed on the water in this, uh, kind of remote desert area, which a float plane in the desert is kind of strange, but anyway, on the water up to these, like the sand dune kind of area and these guys in the whole middle Eastern, 
garb, you know, turbans and gown and all that, or like the robes, you know, came out and we unloaded a bunch of stuff onto the beach and that was it. I had just this quick, you know, this picture. Um, and I had no aviation background at all. Like nobody in my family is a pilot, nothing like that. And, um, so for me, that was just like, oh, okay. I didn't know what to do with that. You know, never had that kind of experience. And, um, so I just really held on to that. I don't maybe shared that with a pastor or, I mean, with just my parents, not even my pastor, but, and, uh, then it was like several years later, me and my wife knew each other during that time. And then we got married at 20, um, kind of settled into work aspect of life. And, um, I just held on to that for several years. And then, um, I actually watched into the spear at about 20, 20, 21 years old, uh, 21 years old or so. And, um, so for, that was about three years from that vision. And, uh, when I watched into the spear, I was like, that's missions aviation. That's what that, it, it just clicked back to that vision, you know? And, um, uh, that was the first time I realized, oh, maybe God is doing something. Maybe he's calling me this direction. Um, and so, yeah, it's a longer story. You know, there's a lot of details in there, but um, that's what led me to Laterno University there in East Texas, not too far from where I grew up. And um, they have a missions aviation course and, you know, a lot more to that story, but God just opened those doors and just step by step, we went right to Laterno and did my four years there in the missions aviation program. So, yeah, yeah. so that's, you know, you're working as a missionary pilot mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so from Laterno, I did the four years of, you know, commercial pilot training and then, uh, aircraft maintenance certification too there at Laterno. And, um, so is that, is that required? Uh, if you're going to be a missionary pilot, do you have to? Yeah. I mean, generally speaking, yes. Um, there could potentially be some organizations, you know, a smaller organization that like not, might not have those, um, those standards, but generally speaking, yeah, a commercial, commercial certificate with, you know, five, 500 hours of flight time as a minimum and then a maintenance okay. certificate as well. Yeah. They, they want you to be able to work on your own aircraft if you're, yeah. Yeah. But if you're away from the base and right. something happens, you that need to sense. have some knowledge of how to get back in the air. So makes sense. Mm-hmm. So you went over the years, you, you've gotten different training and certification. And so what, what was the next step after that? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I got, you know, commercial single and multi-engine ratings there at Laterno and then maintenance. And I started into the flight instructor program, but then that was right, you know, right at graduation basically. And so I did the, you know, like the knowledge portion, the ground portion of that. And then through Laterno got connected to a ministry up in Alaska called Kingdom Air Corps and, um, worked there these last, that's, that's the Alaska connection. Um, it's a missionary pilot training facility. And so, um, so I worked there as an instructor. Um, our director there was a Laterno grad, you know, back in the sixties. And, uh, so he goes every year to Laterno for their missions conference. And so that was that connection went up to Alaska and it was just a really good, um, I was able to, to provide a service to other guys, but at the same time I was gaining more experience that I needed. You know, you leave school with just a couple hundred flight hours and then you got to hit that 500, like the magic 500 somehow. So for me to go instruct, um, a lot of guys just instruct somewhere, but to go a place to a place where I could, you know, support other guys going to the mission field. That was really cool. I was, you know, giving and receiving kind of at the same time. So, and I can imagine there's a lot of different scenarios or different grass airstrips, Mm -hmm. short landing, short takeoff. Yeah, a lot of gravel gravel strips are real common in Alaska. So, you know, where I learned to fly in East Texas, as soon as you break the tree line, it's all flat. Like there's <laughs> there's nothing to hit except a antenna somewhere, um, and everything's paved. You know, so to go up to Alaska um, was a really good yeah opportunity to get that extra experience. That you know, different terrain, mountain flying. You know, yeah, it was really yeah. really good. And I did uh, get that. Yeah, so God's opened the door for you to work in other places around the world and, and yeah. help out with different organizations as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, there's there's that typical missionary pilot, um, you know, so a lot of larger organizations that, and that's, that's really needed and necessary. But then for us, we just felt like, hey, we really want to be a part of um, 
of equipping people, how to, you know, how to do this. Um, and especially that's why I love this connection with iTech. You know, I, we share that same passion of equipping indigenous people and ethnic people, how to do, how to do the job themselves, how to, you know, carry this out, be a part of the great commission themselves. And so, um, and that was, that was a big part of the ministry there in Alaska, um, of people from other countries coming to receive training outside of us guys. Like we had, you know, um, we had younger uh, American guys that, you know, hey, this is the future that I want to have as a missionary pilot. But then half or so of our other students were already, they were already in, they were maybe a pastor in Russia or they were, you know, working in Haiti or whatever. And they were, so they were already out on the field. They mm-hmm. just wanted to add aviation to what they were doing to have a broader reach. You know, right. um, and so, so yeah, for us, um, we, we've just kind of made that decision like, Hey, we want to be a part of training and equipping people. Mm-hmm. And so then that kind of creates for us this, uh, you know, a unique opportunity to kind of float around. Right. Um, and so, yeah, we've, we're kind of in and out of Alaska and then in and out of other countries too, um, with other organizations that, that same thing, they want to add aviation to what they're doing. Right. Already. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's part of what brings you to high tech. Yeah. Um, we, uh, you know, transportation is an issue in remote places around the world. And uh, we have a, a department of high tech we call mission transportation mm-hmm. and trying to find creative ways to get in and out of places that are difficult beyond roads, beyond yeah. airstrips. Mm-hmm. And um, so this week you, you've been a part of our um, UAS training. Yeah. 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 Which is also pretty cool. Just how that all happened that, you know, director of transportation, Zach here, um, he and I went to school at Letourneau actually. And we, we crossed over by a couple of years. And so we lived together in the married housing on campus. They were just a couple of apartments over. And so we were friends, you know, during that time, 2009, 2010, um, timeframe. And then we haven't really stayed connected too well. And then um, he called me over this summer and was like, hey, you know, I'm I'm here at iTech now. And do you want to come and check out our UAV program? And and yeah, for sure, I, I wanted to do that. So God just um, kind of united our two families back together during this week. And um, but yeah, the the UAV program here is really it's really pretty amazing. Like for me, I'm just I'm still kind of like, wow, this is so cool. You know, it's just all autonomous and um can just go just goes where you send it comes back you know um it's it's pretty amazing technology um and so so yeah it's not transporting people necessarily um but you know just a small um a lot of places around the world you just need to send a vaccine or you need to send a you know some kind of medicine or something and so to just shoot this thing out and within an hour you know, could save you a couple of days of travel right. or hours of hiking through the jungle or whatever. You just shoot that thing out and, right. and yeah. drop it. So, um, so I see really, really great potential, um, for what we're doing to just add, add that as a tool alongside, you know, transport, transportation of people and other larger sure. stuff to just have that as a, in your pocket. Right. Tool. I mean, so as a, as a pilot involved in mission aviation, uh, this really presents, uh, another tool in the toolbox, mm-hmm. uh, just yeah. kind of expanding capabilities. It sometimes it makes sense to fly in and out of a place, mm-hmm. but other times it might make more sense to send a small vehicle. You yeah. know, when we say UAV, a lot of people um, think of the drones. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, very popular now with the the small um, copters that have a you know camera built in and, right. and fly yeah. all over the place, but. There's, there's a lot of variation to that depending mm-hmm. on how far you want to go, how much weight you want to carry. There's options with different, you know, rotors, mm-hmm. fixed wing, all kind of things out there. And as yep. battery technology continues to improve, yeah, so improves the capabilities of these mm-hmm. different drones or UAVs. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then what I, too, what I like about it is, um, you know, you could do that with a, a manned aircraft, but then in bad weather or whatever situation, then you have, you are moving the stuff, but you have a person on there too. Right. You know, you've got a life going along with it. So in this situation, I mean, you could potentially lose the, your, your wing, you know, you could lose that, but 
there's no person involved in that. And so if it's the weather's a little iffy or whatever, you can send this out instead, you know. So I like it. Nice. Yeah. So do you feel like it was a, a worthwhile week here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had never, I didn't, like I said at the beginning, I didn't grow up around aviation. And so I didn't, you know, a lot of guys are, you know, they're, they're airplane geeks, you know, they, they're flying RC planes, you know, from the time they can walk or whatever, you know, and that, it, that is something that I want to say to, you know, um, when God calls you to something, you don't have to know it all at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be like this well-equipped person, you know, God, God just like Gideon, you know, I mean, Gideon was just, he was kind of hiding out, you know, doing his own thing. And, uh, and God called him and he was the guy that God wanted to use. And, um, so I have to kind of fight that off sometimes this intimidation factor, <laughs> you know, but, um, there's a, we read Mark Batterson books a lot. And, um, and he says something like, if your dream doesn't scare you, then it's too small. You know, like these God-sized dreams. Um, that way you know that it's God doing it. When it succeeds, it's like, hey, I didn't do this. You know, God was behind it. Um, and so, yeah, for me, this week was really good because I didn't I didn't grow up flying RC planes, so I had to start at the beginning. You know, I spent a couple of days in the simulator, you know, with the RC controller, like, okay, how do I keep this thing upright, you know? And, um, and so, yeah, your, your team here has been really, really good at just from like that zero level as far as RC goes, um, just bringing me right up through that real quick. And we've, you know, we've made a couple of good flights this week and um, just learning, learning how to do the basics. Um, but that's another beautiful thing about this is it's not, is not super complicated to where it's like you need some degree or you need like all this really technical training. You could pick it up. And I think that's why I'm so excited about it too. You know, you could take this tool. It, it does a great job, but it's not so complicated that it takes, you know, this big certificate or all this training. You can, you can pass it on pretty easy. So yeah, it's been a good week. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, if, um, you had to project, where do you think, um, the future of mission aviation lies and use utilizing some of this technology. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is a good thought, you know, um, because some of a lot of places around the world, you know, fuel is not available mm -hmm. and, um, you know, ground personnel as far as like maintenance and stuff like that is, you know, hit and miss at times. Um, and so I think to have this as a, as a tool along with, you know, your, you know, typical manned aircraft. Um, I think it's really necessary because like you said, technology is constantly changing. Batteries that you can use are always getting better, you know, longer range, all this stuff. And so I feel like, um, it's a big, I think it's a big call from the Lord for the church to always be on the cutting edge of technology on the cutting edge of, of, um, you know, media and all those things, the church should be utilizing all of that to its fullest. Like we're kind of winding down on this global clock. Um, and one day, you know, the great commission will be fulfilled. Um, but you know, using this kind of technology to speed that process along and reach people as quickly as we can, you know, to start that, start that process and using every, every tool we can to do that. Like, you know, why not? And so, um, yeah, that's just another, another plug out there. You don't have to, it's not, this isn't just for aviation, you sure. know, like any, yep. um, any field that you're in, like be right. the best that you can be like strive for excellence in that because, um, cause God wants to use whatever tool, you know, whatever gifting he's given you, like, man, use that to the fullest capacity. So absolutely. And mm -hmm. I think that that's the key word. This is a tool to be yeah. used in the, in mm -hmm. the work. And, um, yeah, I, I don't think it replaces at all someone like yourself to be yeah. involved and to direct, but having a broader range of understanding of what's out there um, to apply it then to the areas that you're working around the world, I think yeah. is key. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, yeah, it's it, this week has been has been really good because I think iTech does a really good job of that reaching into these different fields. You know, not just not just one way, but like. I think here you guys have that that mentality that um, you know what 
in all of these different areas, how can we, how can we stretch this out? Like, how can we, you know, how can we change? How can we adapt? Um, and especially during 2020, you know, I've been really impressed by the church just in general of adaptability, flexibility, like how, you know, things are changing. So how can we change along with right. it to still have an impact? Right. Yeah. It's been, it's been good to see that. Yeah. There are more streaming services than ever before. Yeah. So, yeah. Which is good. Yeah. You know, you can reach right into people's home and yeah. people are looking for that. Yeah. Well, I, I'm encouraged to hear uh, just your journey of, as we've chatted several times. And I think for somebody that's out there that's listening, you know, I think it might be um, an unobtainable trajectory to think mm-hmm. of, okay, well, you know, I'm not 20 years old and making a decision to go to Laterno University yeah. or, mm-hmm. you know, but what, what, what role does God have for me? And I yeah. think, again, one of the things you mentioned earlier was, was very important is that you're not always going to be totally equipped yeah. before you're called. Mm-hmm. I've heard it said that God doesn't call the equipped, he equips yeah. the called. Right. And yep. so taking that step of faith, I think, yeah. is key. Yeah, just saying yes, saying yes to Jesus, you know, mm-hmm. is huge. Um, because it's is really common biblically. Like, you know, God called, like we mentioned Gideon, you know, or Moses or these guys that they don't feel like, what am I going to do? Right. You know, but they just eventually, some took a little more prodding <laughs> right. than others. But, you know, that eventual yes to the Lord. And then he, I've been amazed at that in my own life, the people that God brings into my life, you know, like, once you say yes and you start, you know, like that whole thing of like it's hard to steer a parked car. Mm-hmm. If you just start rolling, you know, the Lord will direct you. Um, but, you know, our our will is really important in that. That yes is essential. Right. You know, he's not just going to grab you by the scruff of the neck and drag you around. Like he, you know, his, your willingness and your your cooperation with the Holy Spirit to do to do this work is is real critical. But yeah. Right on. Well, Zach, I, I greatly appreciate the time um, yeah. to be able to just hear a little bit about how God has directed you. But what ways, if there's somebody out there that would like to pray for you or, or help out in any way, um, yeah. what, what might you say? Yeah. So one of the big things is, you know, this year of travel restrictions and COVID restrictions and all of these different things. Um, so we're we came back from Alaska in May. Um, or we came back from Thailand in May to Alaska. So we spent our summer in Alaska and then now in the lower 48. Um, and so then we're kind of, kind of in limbo a little bit of when, you know, when are we going to travel again? When are we, you know, when are some of these restrictions going to be lifted? Um, but I, I want to make use of this time while we're here, kind of like this week, you know, it just, it worked out and the schedules worked out for us to come for this week of training. And I think we're coming back again, to follow up and, you know, get, get a little bit more of a good grip of how to use this out in the field. Um, but that would be a big prayer of, you know, some, we need wisdom on, you know, how long do we stay and who do we, who other, you know, organizations do we need to connect with to develop these kind of tools? Um, but that, that would be a big one. Um, and then, you know, my wife also, you know, she's, we've got three boys and so, all of the traveling and all of those things just for our family personally, you know, to keep, keep moving forward and and that the boys can, you know, um, all their school and everything that they, they have to do that they can keep going to. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Zach, for joining us on this mission minded podcast. And thank you for joining us on this episode of the mission minded podcast. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of mission minded. For more information on today's topic and show notes, please visit our website, itechusa.org. Mission Minded Podcast is produced by iTech. The goal of this podcast is to inspire conversations about Great Commission participation. The views, organizations, and individuals represented, interviewed, and discussed on the podcast do not necessarily represent an official position or formal partnerships with iTech.